All right, and today we're going to be looking at Cliff Kingsbury's offense uh, against the Atlanta Falcons here and how he's him and Kyler Murray have exploded onto the scene. Uh, funky technique here by the center. What are we looking at uh, from this Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury play um, with Kyler Murray hitting a big shot here for 38 yards? So, yeah, here we're going to be on a two-by-two. Two. So, with that, a lot of times they'll read that backside end when they go guard-tackle counter in this uh, air raid offense that Cliff Kingsbury runs. So with that guard tackle counter, the end is unblocked, but here it's going to be off of a run action to get the pass game opened up here. So it's a true uh, pass play. It's no RPO, nothing like that. It's a true uh, just run action, selling the run action to get into the play action game. That motion man is going to come down and squeeze down on that end man on the line, that defensive end who is essentially unblocked in, in the counter scheme to get the boot action going and secure that end. The interesting part here about how it's blocked up up front is from the center, and we'll get back to that once we get to the tight angle. But as far as the passing concept, we just really have a, a deep post and a deep over by uh, Larry Fitzgerald and the backside receiver there. And to the play side, it's just a deep out. So that really holds that corner down there. He see, see him stopping at that 40-yard line mark, holds that corner, and now the backside post is getting over top of the uh, opposite safety. Uh, and then the rest of it's just Kyler Murray and that arm talent that we talk about with him, really a talented, uh, gifted passer, really has a big arm, throws the ball, almost uh, looks like, what, 60-so yards? Yeah. And just really a great play here, a great run action, something that you really don't see a whole lot as far as the play action game. And if we get going to the tight angle here. We yeah. Can... And just before coach, we jump to the tight. Uh, I just want to make the point. There really isn't anything fancy, right. Coming from this play call. It's just, like you said, it, it's a post, it's a under and a comeback route. So what's not like this play and why it pops isn't necessarily because of some great play design downfield, right. It's more of what's happening up front. And when we get to the tight version here, you're able to see a lot, uh, a lot cleaner of what's actually happening up front. So let's walk through here. What we're seeing. So, yeah, we're going to have the guard tackle counter action, which is a staple of the run game in this offense. And in this, the center is supposed to block back and not allow that defensive tackle to retrace over or, or cross face, as a lot of teams will call it. But here, he essentially needs to some way, somehow get him reached. And instead of truly reaching him, he just throws him backside. And this really does look yeah. kind of like a hold, but he gets away with it. Throws him backside and now keeps working to secure that edge, get out in the boot game for Kyler Murray, be that extra escort blocker for him here. So really an interesting design, something that I've honestly never even seen before as far as uh, play action pass game wise, really something interesting and something that I'm sure you'll see in the offseason. A lot of teams going to copy. We talk about a copycat league and a copycat game, something to look for in, in the coming weeks from other offenses, something to look for going forward in the uh, Arizona Cardinals offense. Yeah, and just one other part too, because I know you can't see it because it's cut out in this part of the screen here, but that we talk about that slot receiver motioning down here, and he's actually a crucial part of this blocking scheme where he's going to crack down on this end and allow Kyler Murray to get a semi-roll before he, he sets his feet and throws downfield. So yeah, really a good job by utilizing motion, uh, shifting the formation, forcing the defense's eye discipline to get a little uh, out of whack there with the run game action, getting guys flowing downhill, allows the deep post to develop over the top. The next play we have from uh, Cliff Kingsbury here is we're inside the red zone coach inside the five yard line. Um, and we're just trying to get the ball. We have a spread formation here. We're trying to get the ball two athletes in space. So we start off in the three by one formation. We're going to, it's a good job of using motion here in the goal line with that run across with, by the DB there. Good way to ID zone versus man is using motion across the formation. So there he starts to run with him, bumps into the box, doesn't go all the way with him, which is bad on the defender's part, but a good way. Once he starts to motion into the box and they don't bump coverage, good way to ID man versus zone out of this one high look. So really it's going to be a cover one buzz, so to say, because now that they're into the goal line, that one high safety doesn't need to play deep middle as his back's against the end zone. So he'll roll down and essentially be more of a buzz or a robber defender to play uh, underneath <clears throat> and with this snag concept once they id man it really just turns into a pick play as we have larry fitzgerald running the sit route trying to pick the defender that would be guarding the running back forces him to really scrape hard underneath to get there which forces a bad angle 
We also get some collision there with the corner out from the tight end. And once that rub happens, uh, Murray's eyes just get right to that running back. The safety does a good job of driving on it late over the top. He just gets there a little too late. Talk about getting guys the ball in space, and you just need two yards. That little split-second moment of guys trying to exchange guys and get over the top of that rub route, uh, really just a good job of play design with that motion, IDing man coverage, and then getting to your man answer within that concept. Yeah, there's two points I want to make here, too. The first one, um, for those who don't know what a snag concept is, and that's all we're looking for, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Coach, because terminology could be different. For the snag concept, we're just getting some sort of outbreaking route, some sort of deeper outbreaking route, and then a little sit-down route, too. So mm-hmm. here, uh, we're getting that outbreaking route, but the sit-down route is acting, as you said, naturally a pick blade just because the field is so condensed and so shortened up. Um, and then this outbreaking route's coming from the backfield. And just the second thing is, too, if, if you're Cliff Kingsbury, you got to be driving yourself a little bit crazy because, uh, as you said, looking at ID man coverage, you got it, but then he stops, right? So he may think, okay, he stopped. There's a zone on the backside, and he ends up running free wide open. And it's a busted coverage, essentially, but if you just check to his right, there right. ain't nobody over there. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of times when teams will run this, you can do it with a like running back wheel to the backside if you want to run it to the three receiver side. And a lot of times they'll be hot off of that backside check down. So if you get cover zero, something like that, no one's covering, quote unquote, back out of the backfield the other way. And that really turns into Isabella as a receiver here. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of times offensive coordinators teach to just check it down, get it out there hot right now if no one covers him, and then get back to the uh, snag or a mesh concept, whatever your man beater is the other side. And here, still score, but at the end of the day, if you're really trying to teach it from a philosophical perspective, you want him to hit that check down. But in the NFL, you can always live with seven points. So. That's right. That's right. Okay, the next play, uh, second quarter, 10 minutes and 54 seconds left. First and 10, coach on our own 21 and I think we have tight zone here. Talk us through, Coach, uh, what we have. And shameless plug here on your tight zone. I believe you did a live clinic on tight zone back in the spring. Yes, over uh, spring, summer, something like that. Good. After- we'll make sure we'll make sure we link it in the description below, so be able to check that out. But yeah, Absolutely. what are we seeing here, Coach? Yep. So yeah, we got three by one. We got the nub tight end to the uh, single side, the one by side. That we talk about it in our. Uh, some previous segments forces that corner to get involved in run fits, which is really the, the one big benefit of having that nub tight end. If teams don't want to adjust and play some cover one and bring that linebacker to cover and bring a corner over the top, you really force that corner to get involved into the run fits. And here we see how it kind of comes back to bite him a little bit again here. Uh, so with this tight zone, um, we're running it to the closed surface. I mean, we're running it to a three man surface with the guard tackle and tight end as they're running it to the left here. So that tight end to the uh, front side of the call will be big on bit or man on man to that play side defensive end. He's really just trying to make sure that he doesn't cross his face as this is an inside hitting run. We don't need him to retrace over the top. So he does a good job taking a good angle, a good hard inside angle, forces that inside hand, really throw him outside, keep him outside and not let him retrace over the top. Play side versus that uh, three technique. We're going to have a double team here by the guard and tackle. Uh, the timing step there by the guard really allows that bucket step, might p- people like to call it, to get underneath and try to get over, which allows them more uh, more freedom to overtake and get to the double team like they do there. So on the fly, that linebacker scrapes over the top, tackle comes off, does a good job of doing that. Guard overtakes the combo on the play side. Backside here, we have a similar uh, – Similar movement there. We get the uh, straight up field vertically through the crotch step by the center. Backside guard is using that bucket step technique to overtake it. Uh, that linebacker scrapes over the top again, come off a double team. Really a good job of getting those first five initial threats blocked up by our first five. Backside tackle, going to be man on man with the backside end. Once again, taking a good angle, keeping that inside hand up. Forcing him outside really does a good job of expanding that B-gap. And now you can see the running back does a good job of reading where that backside linebacker is flowing to. Puts his foot in the ground once he sees that uh, the center overtake that double team, throws that D-tackle into the play side A-gap. Now he hits that cutback lane into the open B-gap for a nice gain here. Yeah, Coach, I want you to break down for me, you know, if there's any coaches watching as well. 
Um, if I'm a coach and, you know, I'm looking at this from a defensive perspective, I'm saying, man, if that one technique just held his gap and, you know, stayed gap discipline, this play would get blown up. But um, I want you to talk from an offensive perspective. And, you know, if I'm a coach and I run inside zone, why would I put tight zone in? Or what's the benefits of running tight zone here, um, you know, as different from inside right. zone? So, yeah, here with this tight zone, uh, the whole point of running tight zone as opposed to a true zone scheme is it really forces you to get these double teams. So here we have the center and the backside guard as well as the play side guard and play side tackle trying to get movement on these double teams, pry open those A gaps. And essentially the seam pre-snap where it should hit if, if we get these guys blocked up the way that they're aligned pre-snap is it should hit to that play side A gap right in between where that crease is right now. Yep. But with that post-snap movement, uh, that guy gets over the top and it just allows movement with double teams, allows the back to really have patience, see where that hole develops, you wouldn't inside zone, but really just creating those double teams is the big uh, key point that teams like to run tight zone as opposed to a true inside zone scheme where guys are just trying to get movement, get washed. It kind of, it kind of eliminates the double team and the big emphasis on tight zone is getting combos, getting guys moved to the second level, coming off the linebackers with rules in place to do so. The final play, we're into the third quarter, uh, just about 12 minutes left. Second and one, and Coach, the playbook is wide open when we have second and one here. We can run whatever okay. we want. I have to pause this perfectly right now because we're getting a shift, and the camera guy cuts it a little bit too close here, but right now we're getting pre-snap shift. It's a two-by-two two look. I, uh, excuse me, three-by-one look with the tight end, and I'll bring it back just a little bit. Okay, we have tight end, two splits here, and a wide guy, and then we're going to shift into a wing tight end look two by two and then coach take us away what we have next here so yeah after we get that shift to a two by two tight wing look there um now we're going to get a cross motion from the outside receiver isabella he's just going to run a quick little speed out there uh back it's going to be in protection as well as the uh line going to the left side yep. full slide going to the left and now we're going to have the crossing route the quick drag coming back across by that tight end and then the deep post by Fitzgerald with that post snap, post snap shift the Falcons get into a cover one look here and essentially with the tight end the wing and the back to their side the corner and the first two linebackers in the box are responsible for those three guys in cover one with that guys get a little bit confused as to who has first who has second and who has third as well as now you have to run across with motion and with that, guys' eyes just get displaced. They get off of their uh, man keys. And this crossing route who slips out late, good job of uh, releasing late too because now that linebacker thinks, oh, my guy's in the pass protection. I can get into more of a zone middle hole drop, like a cover one hole look there by the linebacker. And after the ball is thrown, he's realizing, oh, crap, my guy slipped protection during a backside drag route and was covering him as he just walks in for six yeah and you could see his hands kind of go uh like he gives the whole damn that was definitely my fault right, right. <laughs> and um uh, what's interesting about this play too like you know i know you're a huge fan of motion right and just mm -hmm. it takes and i'm a fan of it too and i'm a f even bigger fan of shifting i love shifting because to your point and i know you, you've said this on previous uh shows as well it just takes the eyes off the keys and it makes you think a little bit more, right? This, oh, yeah. this corner thinks on this linebacker thinks, Oh, now I have to take the motioning guy and there's no communication process clearly. Right. Even I, even though me and you aren't inside the huddle or on the defensive field right now, there's a communication breakdown because they're in cover one, they're showing cover one and they're letting this guy just go. And that's what causes right. this wide open backside drag to happen. And it's another breakdown on the Falcons defense, but uh, another great play call by Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah, and just going back to that whole shifting in motion thing, talking as being a football coach, talking to our defensive coordinator the other day, and he was just like, why wouldn't you just shift every single why? snap exactly. in, yep. in motion? Just because we think about it from a defensive perspective and just that like how you treat three by one as opposed to two by two could totally change what you're doing within the defensive play call and just little minute things like that where, oh, you're off your key now, like we talked about, getting off your read keys, getting off of your proper coverages, and now you guys are out of position. Guys' eyes aren't where they need to be. And then plays like this result in the form of a touchdown for the offense. Yeah, and here's another look here from the tight view. You'll see one of these linebackers are messed up. He's supposed to bump. He's supposed to go. 45 releases off. And then he just slips out to the wide side. So, yeah, it's interesting, especially when you don't 
have that effective communication when there is uh, any motion, especially coming to now a three by one side, there's got to be some sort of, I got him, I got him. If not, you get gashed here for a considerable amount of touchdown. So thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for our future videos. Also, if you want to watch more content, be sure to check out these videos and we'll see you next time.